Fisk. He swings, long drive, left field. If it stays there, it's gone. Home run! The Red Sox win! And the series is tied three games apiece. A memorable event has immediately followed the World Series every year since 1943. It's the production of a World Series highlight film, which is commissioned each year by Major League Baseball. In the past, these films have been kind of hard to find, but now a limited number are being made available. The World Series films have an interesting history. They've been in color since 1959, and since 1982, they haven't been on film at all, but videotape productions. Beginning in 1969, they've contained material not seen on television, including, in some films, exclusive interviews, sound from wireless microphones, and camera angles not seen on the TV coverage. Since all the videos being released are of classic World Series, you may have a tough time deciding which ones to watch first, but for right now, Get comfortable and relax, because you're about to watch America's premier sporting event, the World Series. Following a season in which they won 104 games, the Detroit Tigers, led by manager Sparky Anderson, close in on a three-game championship series sweep of the Kansas City Royals. One to nothing, Tigers. Ninth inning. Here's a pitch. Motley swings. There's a pop foul off a third. It may be the pennant. Castillo has it, and the Tigers have won the American League pennant. Their first since 1968. While Detroit celebrated, the National League Championship Series raged on. The San Diego Padres, in search of a miracle, returned home to a surprise welcome after two losses in Chicago. Padre manager Dick Williams and his men responded, and suddenly San Diego started to rise. A victory in Game 3 set the stage for one of baseball's most memorable games. All capped off in Game 4 by Steve Garvey's ninth inning home run. A home run that shocked the Cubs, deadlocked the series, and made people think that the Padres had a destiny of their own. In the climactic Game 5, the Padres led 6-3. to three. Here's the goose. The 1-1 one, one pitch. A one hopper to Nettles, to Wiggins, and the Padres have the National League finish. Oh, Ducker, you can hang a star of that, baby. Presenting the 1984 Fall Classic, Sounds of the Series. He don't want to walk you. That wasn't the type of bun I wanted. Nice going. That's a good scouting report, Rich. The best arm is the right fielder, and he wind up to throw. Don't want to make no plane trips. Let's go. Just don't say anything. If it bothers me, I'll tell you. Don't worry. Okay. I ain't telling you where it's at, but I'll tell you if it's gone, all right? I like to keep attacking you. You didn't think you got him? I was just making sure. You mean you're talking about striking him out? Yeah. I mean, this guy is just making us eat our lunch. Never can tell what'll happen here. Series 1984, matching the American League pennant winning Detroit Tigers and the San Diego Padres, first time champions of the National League.
nearly 58,000 fans are on hand to watch history in the making. San Diego's first World Series, presided over by baseball's new commissioner, Peter Ubaroff. The commissioner has designated first ball honors to a man who represents all the fans of baseball as he attends his 238th series game. Pat Olson of College Station, Texas. But the real first ball is to be found in the left hand of Padre Mark Thurman as the 81st World Series gets underway. For the Detroit Tigers, the second baseman, Lou Whitaker. Sweet Lou Whitaker scored 90 runs for the Tigers over the season, and he's one man the Padres don't want to see on base. A drive to the deepest part of the stadium puts Whitaker on second, and quickly the Tigers are on the attack. The next batter is native San Diegan Alan Trammell who makes his home two miles away from the Padre ballpark. As Whitaker races round, Detroit takes a one to nothing lead. Over the years, the Tigers won 83% of the games in which they scored first. That one run advantage is entrusted to Jack Morris, a new face to both the Padres and the National League's men in blue. Hey, has he got something that I don't know about? I want to know, like a knuckleball or anything like that. He's got a good change up and he throws that split finger thing. Nice going. That's a good scouting report, Rich. Even to the casual observer, Jack Morris had the right stuff in 84. The Tiger ace notched 19 wins, including a no hitter, and now comes off a strong outing in the playoffs against the Royals. But when it comes to credentials, it's tough to top Steve Garvey, who recently added playoff MVP to his list. In the bottom of the first with two out, the toast of San Diego gets a first look at Jack Morris. With his ninth postseason hit, Garvey holds it first. Up next is another well-accomplished veteran, Greg Nettles. Now, runners are on first and second. Back-to-back -back hits and the makings of a two-out rally. There's nothing Jack the Cat wants to avoid more than a first-inning trap, especially with dangerous Terry Kennedy up. Ganging up on the Tigers, the Padres have shown some pop of their own. After the opening inning, it's 2-1 to one San Diego. But three innings later, a problem looms for the Padres. Mark Thurmond has thrown nearly a game's worth of pitches, and manager Williams is concerned. He has thrown 90-some-odd pitches. He's got one more. Oh, wait, Thurmond! Okay, but one more. Okay. Let's see how he goes. Okay. Ah. Uh, Let's keep trying. We'll sit on him now. One more. If we get one more out of him, that's all we can get out of him, I believe. What's he got? 93. In the top of the fifth, Lance Parrish has just delivered a two-out double. That brings up left fielder Larry Herndon. Oh. A stunning lesson in how one pitch can undo more than a hundred. Larry Herndon's opposite field two-run homer has put the Tigers out in front three to two. In the seventh inning, San Diego's designated hitter, Kurt Babacqua, steps up thinking perhaps of an earlier report on the Tiger outfielders. Left fielder on. He's not going to throw anybody out. We're going to run. It's not accurate. We're not going to. The best arm is the right fielder, and he winds up to throw. We're going to run on all of them, at least try it. But Buck was ready to run, but as he well knows, first of all, he's got to get on base. Yeah. 
for San Diego. Disappointment and a sudden jolt. Flip. Yeah. On the replay, rounding second, Babakwa clearly slips, and that one misstep combined with a fine relay from Lou Whitaker made the difference. By the ninth inning, another point has become clear. Jack Morris has been in complete control, striking out six of the last 11 batters and now needs just one more out. Dave Bergman makes the play, and the Tigers are 3-2 to two winners on the road. Game one of the 84 series has gone to Detroit, and for Sparky Anderson, a special moment, his 12th straight postseason victory. With spirit still soaring, San Diego settles in for game two. On the mound, Ed Whitson, 14 and 8 during the season, and the leading practitioner of the palm ball. But not about to knuckle under, Lou Whitaker gets a hand as the ball game gets going. Whitson's first pitch is wrapped for a single, and that's not the kind of start the Padres wanted. Soon, more trouble. A man who had two hits the day before, Alan Trammell. Let's go! Let's go, Next in the order, Kirk Gibson. Come on, give me the ball you want now. The ball you want. Whitson's third pitch yields a third hit, and very quickly it's one to nothing, Tigers. Get him out, get him. What do you got up? We can get Hawkins if you want. He's a, huh? Hawkins, yeah, get him up. Action in the bullpen, and still action on the bases. Gibson steals second, and then Lance Big Wheel Parish takes a turn. The runners tag, and Detroit goes up two to nothing. Next, Darrell Evans takes a poke, and despite a great Gary Templeton effort, a third run is in. <laughs> Whitson exits after just 16 pitches, replaced by reliever Andy Hawkins. Yeah, go ahead and throw. Go ahead and throw. Hold him right there now. We've got a long way to go. Go hard now. Hawkins holds on. And although Detroit is up by three, 18-game winner Dan Petrie finds himself in a first-inning jam. The Padres have two on, nobody out, and a surprise in the works. If you want to lay one down, you go ahead. If you want to lay one down, you're not second fight, but if you want to lay one down, fine. Now, maybe Steve can drop a bunt down here. Never can tell what'll happen here. All eyes are fixed on Steve Garvey, San Diego's top RBI man. A solid sacrifice, but the skipper intended something else. That wasn't the type of bunt I wanted. I wanted to try, I wasn't wanting to sacrifice, I wanted to try to drop one. He's way back. Yeah. Even in the series, there's still time to teach. Steve, were you trying to push it out that way? Yeah. Okay, because he's way back at third. No, and I. Back at first slow, so. there, there's your slow man, your guy at third. That's all right, good try. We moved two up. Let's get these two in. We're on our way. Now the task of driving in a run befalls Greg Nettles. Left fielder Rupert Jones has a running start, but tagging up is speedy Alan Wiggins. The replay clearly shows Wiggins safe at home, and at the end of a busy first inning, it's 3-1 to one Tigers. In the fourth, Kurt Babakwa has led off of the single, and one out later, he's followed by switch hitter Gary Templeton. This time, Babak was in at third, but it wasn't exactly a smooth ride. Oh, muscle. You did. Where? Your leg? Your leg? Huh? Huh? It's all right. Well, you make sure now. Just a little bit. You sure? Yeah. You sure you're all right? Just don't say anything. If it bothers me, I'll tell you. Don't worry. Okay. Now, with worries of his own, Dan Petrie looks in to find Bobby Brown, who's playing center in place of the injured Kevin McReynolds. 
On the play, Babakwa scores, and the Padres trail by one. Later in the fifth, San Diego threatens with one out and two men on. Taking center stage again, Kurt Babakwa, who only had 80 bats during the year, but he sure has a big job now. Get it done, Kurt. Right man in the right spot. Pulling a slider instead of a muscle, Babakwa and his three RBI performance have brought down the house. Time for a standing ovation and the sight of a two-run lead up in lights. But it's really been a strong supporting role from the bullpen that's kept the Padres in the game. Since coming on in the first, Andy Hawkins has had the Tigers chasing their tails. A swing man during the year, Hawkins has filled the breach, retiring 13 in a row through the fifth, blanking Detroit over five and a third innings of crucial long relief. Picking up where Hawkins left off is Craig Lefferts, who's pitched shutout ball since the seventh. And for those efforts, Craig Lefferts needs just one more out for a save. Alan Wiggins has it, and everything's coming up roses for the Padres. The first World Series win for the 16-year-old franchise is something to be celebrated. And from La Jolla to the South Bay, it's time for a little fiesta in San Diego. But the 84 series will soon be moving on. Next stop, Motown. A sense of history and anticipation in a jam-packed Tiger Stadium as two former minor league teammates who went on to great managing careers greet before game three. First ball honors this night belong to venerable John Fetzer, former owner and now chairman of the Tiger team. With all festivities duly observed, game three starts and neither team scores through the first inning and a half. But in the last of the second, the Motor City machine starts cranking up, ready to move like a super V8. from Marty Castillo puts Detroit out in front two to nothing and the Tigers aren't done yet. San Diego pitching yields 11 walks this night, tying a series record, and that helps the Tigers cruise to a four-run lead after six. But in the seventh, the Padres have closed within three, and that's when reliever Willie Hernandez gets the call. In a dream year, Hernandez had 32 saves and 33 chances. Right now, though, he enters the game with two out, Terry Kennedy at the plate, and Steve Garvey 90 feet away.
Chet Lemon has it. For the Tigers, Lemon turns in some sweet glove work at a clutch time. Even sweeter, a 5-2 win in Game 3. Game 4, and a wave of Motown mania roars across Tiger Stadium. Riding the crest, leadoff man Lou Whitaker. And the other half of Detroit's relentless one-two punch, Alan Trammell. Trammell drove one out in the first. Come on, let's go, baby, drive it! And was still turning heads in the third. Yeah! Two at bats, two home runs, and four RBIs for Alan Trammell, one of the biggest of the Detroit Wheels. After three, it's Tigers four to one. San Diego faces a tall order this day. Tiger starter Jack Morris, who's looking every bit the winningest right-hander in baseball over the past six years. And in the ninth, he's just one out away from victory. For Detroit, a four to two win on Morris's finicky five hitter. In a glamorous event like the World Series, some of the smaller moments are also entitled to close observation. Take, for instance, ball players' little personality traits, like when Kurt Babakwa performs his arm-stretching ritual every time he comes to the plate. Then there are other habits like Morris's chain reaction. And then there's the Steve Garvey Shuffle. The Goose Hat Grab. And then there's the Rupert Jones Lumber Trance. Or how about the Greg Nettles Mitt Shine? And of course, the Marty Castillo one, two, three touch. <laughs> well, to each his own, especially in baseball, where no two teams and no two players are ever quite the same. Before game five, a moment to consider the rampaging Tigers. 35 wins in their first 40 games, never having spent a day out of first place, and now just one win away from the series title. Their starter is Dan Petrie, and he finds Alan Wiggins on board as the Padres battle in the first. Just an ordinary move over here now. Nobody out. Make the line drive go through. With Wiggins on base, the Tigers know the situations as well. But sometimes forewarned is not forearmed. Wiggins at third, one out, and a great opportunity for the Padres. Watch the shortstop. Yeah, I know. I know. Second base, you could go, and the first baseman too. The left side, we're gonna stay, stay here, okay? Right side, we're gonna go home. The next batter, Steve Garvey. Wiggins is out, but manager Williams wants a chat with umpire Paul Runge. Yeah, he hit him right here, Dick. I wonder why he kept going after him. That's a foolish thing, but I can't afford to let it go. He went after him. He knew he I know, he thought he didn't get him, but he did get him. Well, in your mind, he got him. Absolutely. He knows he didn't. He he wanted to, I think he wanted to make gonna sure. Be, it's going to be a debatable thing, isn't it? Yep. He 
You didn't think you got him, Parrish? Huh? You didn't think you got him? I was just making sure. I knew he didn't touch a plate, so I didn't want to have any Tiger precautions keep the Padres off the board. But in the bottom of the inning, San Diego's Mark Thurmond faces a reckless situation as Detroit begins to fire up again. Run around first, one man out, and at the plate, the hulking six foot three inch figure of Kirk Gibson. Shell shock, San Diego is once more in the hole. For the fifth time in five games, the Tigers have struck first. Gibson's blast has Detroit up two to nothing. Before the first inning ends, the Tigers score another, and the Padres now find themselves trailing by three. But San Diego scores a run in the third, and an inning later, Petrie is tested again. Templeton's double puts runners on second and third with one out. Petrie next faces the ninth man in the order, a struggling Bobby Brown. Take up, take up, take up. The sacrifice scores a second run, and the Padres are fighting back. Whenever we come up, we got the lead run there. Out of boy, Kurt. Out of baby. Out of baby. Atta boy, Brownie. Up next, Alan Wiggins batting 368 in the series. Showing the same spirit that got them to the series in the first place, the Padres have rallied to tie. But they fail to score more in the fourth, and for a brief while, the base paths remain calm. It's the bottom of the fifth, and the Tigers have been shut down since the first. Blanking Detroit over three and a third has been reliever Andy Hawkins, serving the team a steady diet of zeros. This guy is just making us eat our lunch. Nevertheless, the Tigers stay hungry. Gibson's second hit is followed by a walk, and when the time comes for a change, it's clear that Hawkins has given all he could. I'm going to make the switch. You've, just been, uh, you've been just outstanding. You've just been super. You, you, you've done it. You've done a great job here. Every time you've gone out here, here, let me get a hand. Get the hand you deserve. That's beautiful. First and second, give him more than one look back there. He'll run. But new reliever Craig Leffert yields a walk to load the bases, and the Tigers know that they have to cash in against San Diego's comeback kid. Don't want to make no plane trips. Let's go. Up at bat, pinch hitter Rusty Koontz. Koontz lifts a routine fly, but right fielder Tony Gwynn loses it. Wiggins steps in, but the throw never has a chance. The Tigers have jumped out to a one-run lead. And later in the seventh, the Padres know they can't allow more. Summoned from the bullpen is Rich Goose Gossage for just the second time in the series. And with one out, the first man Gossage faces is Lance Parrish. The best home run hitting club in the majors has connected again. Parrish's solo shot puts the Tigers up by two. In the eighth, the Tigers turn to their remarkable relief ace, Willie Hernandez, who's made five postseason appearances and yielded just one run. And now with two out, Hernandez confronts an unrelenting Kurt Babacqua. Thirty-seven-year-old Kurt Babacqua, who hit only one home run the entire season, has belted his second of the series. 
and helped bring his never-say-die ball club to within one run of Detroit. But in the bottom of the eighth, San Diego is soon in jeopardy. With one out, the Tigers have runners at second and third with Kirk Gibson coming to bat. Gibson's already homered and singled, and Dick Williams' first thought is to walk him. But Gossage, a former American leaguer, doesn't want to load the bases, and he asks permission to pitch to Gibson. I'm looking over here at you. I've already given him four balls. He told him four. He's coming out. I've had good success. You want the infield in on him? No. Well, you go. I mean, I've got. I've got to cut out. I got to cut. The, you mean you're talking about striking him out? Yeah. He don't want to walk you. Yeah, he don't want to walk you. We got to bring the infield in. Okay. One out. Now, if you doesn't run good, you can stay back a little further. All right. One man out. Dick Williams sticks with a longtime ace, but in this situation, the Tigers have a trump of their own. Kirk Gibson's three-run homer has blown this game apart sweeping all of Tiger Stadium into a spontaneous celebration. A moment of triumph for a ball club and a coming of age for Kirk Gibson, undeniably reaching the heights of his talent. As the cheers echo across the old ballpark, the Tigers take their commanding four-run lead into the ninth and then stand poised to claim a championship. In the final inning, Willie Hernandez has retired two Padres. Now he takes aim at history. A fourth world title for Detroit and a show of unrestrained joy. Ending a season they totally dominated, the Tigers are truly champions. A crowning moment for Sparky Anderson, the first manager to win a World Series in both leagues. And he'd be the first to say he couldn't have done it without his well-blessed boys. Now, time to honor a champion and time to pay special homage to so many championship performances. Like the one turned in by Aurelio Lopez, whose two and a third innings of hitless relief helped win the final game. Then there was Milt Wilcox, steady as a rock through six solid innings and a pivotal win in game three. For San Diego, there was Dave Drabecki, twice called upon from the bullpen, never once scored upon. And a curtain call for Kurt Babakwa, who kept the Padre faith, batting 412, hitting two homers, and cherishing so well his World Series moment. Finally, Alan Trammell, who drove in six runs, batted 450, and was named the series' most valuable player, a star among stars in a World Series galaxy.
<laughs> Relive the moments. Major League Baseball home video.